G'day, g'day, and welcome to my SSR tier lists for both July and overall throughout the early stages of the SSR Plus era. I am in a much better mood for this video than compared to my last video since the suggestions made in that video will be passed on to the devs, so I appreciate everyone for standing up with me and the community about our complaints against the current state of this game. Also, I am currently in a good mood as of the time of this recording since I just witnessed Sean Strickland absolutely fraud check Abus Miagormiadov in the UFC, so if you're interested to know, I'm heavily invested in the UFC and Formula 1, so any questions about them, I will definitely respond to them down in the comments below. Alright, so back to the video. I did shoot myself in the foot for allowing the option of releasing both types of tier lists as I initially wanted to work on one video at the moment. But you guys demanded and I will deliver, so I'll be first going over the current tier list during July. And if you want to skip over to the overall tier list during the early stages of the SSR Plus era, then skip to the timestamp shown on screen or click down below in the chapters for this video. So in regarding to with the ranks, the S tier will be the best of the best in like basically every aspect of the game whatsoever. Uh, a tier will just be very good in certain modes, or if they require too much investment and are a bit heavy in expenses. Uh, B is okay where they have some uses, like in hero or villain content, uh, or other stuff like that. C tier aren't really the greatest units, but they might be good for beginning players, so most of them will be in the C tier. And D tier, I will leave for the worst of the worst, which I will go over really soon. So how I plan to do this tier list is that I'll quickly assign everyone from B to D and talk about them and then I'll go into one by one on the A and S tier units. So starting off in this tier over here. Subterranean King is the biggest pile of dog shit I've ever seen in my life. He's way too common in the summer banners as well as his kit being utter trash so motherfucker dig your ass back down under the surface and rest there for all eternity. If you don't feel this way towards him then you should seek help and locked far away in a mental asylum since you're definitely clinically insane. <gasps> Anyways, excuse my rant and I'll quickly brush through the next two tiers. So in the C tier, uh, Atomic Samurai is a great AoE attacker for newer players, but drops off in the value the more you play, so he'll be easily replaced in your lineups. Uh, Geru is only good if you use units such as Watchdog Man or King, since he'll deal bonus damage to everyone if their energy is sealed. Other than that, he's pretty trash, but he will be needed for the SSR Plus era since he is a must pull when the time comes, but you can wait until then to pull for him since you're in no rush and his rates will be greatly increased in the future. Uh, we have Puri Puri Prisna. He's ass, but I've seen instances where top players still use him in their hero teams for Hero X villain challenges, as he works well against bosses that are hiding in the back row, so that's the only time I can see him being viable for the most part. And Sonic, uh, he's a good unit for newer players, as you can unlock him for free by doing the event challenges you get prompt with at the very start of the game as his shadow and speed boost is neat, but he falls off the more you play this game, so don't invest too much into him in the beginning. And I did decide to add some SR units, since there are some pretty good ones that you can use over SSR units, such as Bakuzan. Uh, he has a decent core for newer players, as well as being very useful for PvP, as he's a bootleg Giro Giro with his Berserk buffs. Uh, there are better cores than Bakuzan, so he is a good starting option for this game, so that's why he's in this tier list. Uh, Golden Ball, he's basically in the same scenario as Atomic Samurai, as he's a great starting AoE attacker that can be replaced later on in this game. Uh, Lightning Genji is a new unit, but he can be a great tank for newer players, as he applies tenacity for his column, and he can buff everyone's attack for those who have tenacity on them, so he is a pretty good option to invest in. And now Magic Trick Man is in this tier list as he's actually a pretty good duelist once Bomb comes out to fill your duelist slot if you don't have any good ones since he can provide bonus damage reduction to everyone in his row which will be great against ATT. So if you're starting out the game then you can invest in him too. Now cruising through the B tier really quick. So Deep Sea King has a decent core that is much better once you unlock his level 4 core to seal your opponent's energy at the start of the battle, which is especially useful in PvP. Other than that, his ult is pretty powerful, and that's really all there is to him. He's considered somewhat as a tank, since his core does provide damage reflex, so you can take that as you will, but he still belongs in the B tier. 
Now a controversial pick is having Gorobus in the B tier as he is a great unit for dot lineups, especially in PvP mode such as Live Clash. Uh, however, he is down in the B tier since he's really hard to obtain and he's quite expensive to unlock as you need to keep buying his shards with gems from the uncommon mystery stores, which is very expensive and tedious, so I'm going to leave him in the B tier for now because of that. Uh, Metal Bat, he is still a pretty good character, especially if you use him with other follow-up units such as Garo and Flashy Flash. However, you do need to invest in him quite a lot in order to make him work with such said units, which shouldn't be your top priority, so he does belong in the B tier. Uh, Metal Knight is a rare breed and he's way out of meta as his AoE attacks are outclassed by many recent units. But his burn and injury are a neat feature which can work well with other units so he can stay at the B tier for the time being. Now Silver Fang, he was useful during the Zombie Man meta but once Giro Giro came out, uh, many people reverted him since his kit is pretty trash other than his passive which provides tenacity shields and a higher block rate. So ever since Giro Giro came out, Silver Fang is pretty bad now and you can use better tanks later on. Uh, Terrible Tornado is only here since she can synergize really well with Amai and Beast King due to her increasing her attack and applying injury to enemies. Otherwise, I would have put her down in the C tier, but because she synergizes very well with these two units, I'm going to leave her in the B tier. So moving on to Amai, he is a great single DPS unit for beginning and even current players, where he also inflicts injury to all units if you 5 star him which he really works well with uh, Beast King, who can follow up on enemies that already have injury inflicted onto them. So I would advise to use both of these units in the same lineup, as they synergize really well with each other. Uh, Dr. Genes is also a great unit for many players, as his core is probably the best core before the three I'll be talking about later, as the clones he summons in the front row can screw up the enemy's attack patterns. And his passive is also great with Zombie Man and Giro Giro cores, as he raises the attack of allies when they heal, which both cores provide. Don't sleep on him, as for an SR character, he really outshines himself over certain SSR characters, especially with his passive. So he's used in a lot of club war lineups. And Sky King is currently used a lot in many AoE teams, since his passive boosts up bonus damage for the first two turns, even when he's dead. Uh, do note that this boosts bonus damage and not pure attack damage, so it will buff your bonus damages from your gear sets or buff gear augmentations or other units that exert bonus damage in their kits such as like Flashy Flash with his passive. Okay, so moving on, I'll be going one by one into each SSR character that we currently have as of July. So firstly, I will put Alloy uh, Darkshine in the A tier. And you'll find that most of the tank units will be within the A or S tier since there are so many uses that tanks can be used for in all aspects of this game, which does include Alloy. So Alloy can provide such great survivability with minimal investment into him as his passive provides great ult reduction for the whole row. And his unyielding will make him outlast crit burst units such as Genos and RMG. So overall, he is a good tank, but others do outshine him in many other aspects of the game, so he can rightfully stay in the A tier for the time being. So next up we have SSR Amai, which I will be putting in the S tier. The reason why he's in S tier and not in A tier is because he drastically changed the PvP scene in the sense of all the top PvP teams include him at the moment since he's such a great utility unit. Uh, he can save having to use speed gears on other units in his row as he can boost their speed up much closer to his as well as providing a strong tenacity shield and great amounts of healing from a free ult which is a very nifty feature to have. The downside of Amai is much like Genos, he is a very expensive character to invest into but not as much as Genos as you only really need to invest into his speed gears and hero buff gear as you really just want to increase his speed as high as possible. Also, Amai can be good for PvE modes such as against Club Boss Boros as I currently use him to speed up my G4 and Zombie Man to apply their debuffs much earlier so that RMG and Boros can maximize their damage outputs once it's their turn from the very first turn. So Amai definitely deserves to be the S tier. Next up we have ATT who recently came out and uh, with all the drama and that's been happening and everything with her 
even in her debut, I have been saying this, but she does belong in the A tier for the time being. Okay, so she is a great character, but I have said this. Uh, she's not in her meta until Bomb comes out. So for the moment during her debut, she is going to be in the A tier. And like I've said, especially with all that's happened within the last week with the community, she has been dubbed as a less essential unit, which I'm going to say that she isn't. She's still really, really good. But I will say that her release schedule was really poorly planned as Bomb should be around the corner now and the anniversary event is coming up. So I would advise you to save your black tickets if you are free to play or if you have less than 300 tickets or so. I recommend to give Gamma's video a watch on whether you should pull for ATT or not, so make sure to check that video out in the description down below. Anyways, at the time of this recording, her keepsake isn't out yet, which is required in order to put her probably in the S tier, as she does a shit ton of damage with the keepsake, and she's not really as powerful without it. But she'll definitely be higher in this tier list once a month has passed and people have gathered enough materials to put into her. So I will leave her in A tier for now. But don't be misled by this. She is still a really good unit to pull and pull for her if you don't have a strong AoE attacker. Right, so moving on to Boris. He currently still belongs in the A tier. So despite the release of RMG, Boris is still very handy during Giro Giro meta as he is another Esper that you can use for Girigiro's core, as well as being a nuker against the front row for all those RMGs that are placed in the front row in PvP especially. He is also still very useful in PvE such as against Club Boss Boris, as he and RMG can be your main burst DPS damage dealers, as my Boris currently can deal up to 15 million damage each turn if I get really lucky, which isn't far off my RMG's ultimate damage. So he's still a great character to have, and especially he's free for uh, free-to-play players as well when you log in. So he's really good unit to have and invest in. But with the release of ATT and other Esper units coming out soon, he will be reverted to cater those newer Espers. So he's still currently an AT unit for the time being. So next up we have Child Emperor, which I will put in the AT. He was my first ever SSR unit, and till this day he's still such a useful character to provide a third core for PvP game modes, as well as using him for stun strats with formal gear, as this is how I managed to beat the later elite stages in the game. He is basically the best core in the game if you exclude Zombie Man and Girigiro, so for beginner players he is the best core to pull for, as his skill set is also really solid for all aspects of the game. Next up we have Carnage Kabuto which I will be putting in the A tier. He still holds up pretty well as a tank especially if you got his keepsake in the claw machine. Otherwise his damage reflect passive is still really good for PvE and for monster teams as he has pretty good survivability. However he has been out of his prime for quite a while now and if you were lucky enough to have pulled for him he'll be needed to unlock his uh, SSR plus variant which is who I believe is to be the very first must pull unit everyone should be getting once the SSR plus era rolls out. So make sure you do have him or save for him and uh, he does currently belong in the A tier at the moment. And next up we have Flashy Flash which I'll also be putting in the A tier. He's really OP in PvP mode such as in Live Clash and in Arena if he is heavily invested in. As I know someone with a 4 star awakened flash in my server and he's always been top 5 because he's just that strong. Not to mention the annoying bonus damage he deals from his passive and follow ups which happen for half of every round. Unfortunately with him he did get released very late during the zombie man meta so his meta span couldn't be utilized as efficiently. But he's a very good unit PvP wise but PvE wise he's not so much so he will be staying in the A tier for the time being as he's basically an ST unit in PvP and a B tier unit in PvE so I'll just balance it out and put him in the A tier. Next up we have G4 which I'll also be putting in the A tier. He is a great DPS unit with his charge damage and shatter debuffs as this is really useful against Club Boss Boris still and for the monsters side of things so such as in monster tournaments. However he is locked up behind a paywall being $10 in USD so that is a bit unfortunate but if you do have the money to spare and if you're a starting player this is a great character to buy for beginners as he does a lot of damage especially with his basic attack which you don't see a lot of people be dealing 
So he is really handy and quite versatile as he also grants himself tenacity once he does attack if he inflicts someone with shatter. So I do recommend getting him if you do have the money to do so. So he is currently going to stay in the A tier for the time being. Next up, we have my boy Garo, which unfortunately isn't S tier and has moved down to the A tier now. His internal injury is great for both PvP and PvE as other burst damage characters such as RMG and Genos do massive amounts of damage on those inflicted on top of his internal injury. He has dipped in PvP though, as the grappler slot is mostly filled by better grapplers such as Goketsu or Watchdog Man as they act as tanks and provide a much higher damage output. And he's also down in the A tier because ATT's force field debuff can still stay on Garo after he has used his unyielding once, which will be bad in PvP and especially in Live Clash as you'd rather have those characters die straight away instead of letting ATT deal even more bonus damage to everyone if field is still inflicted on as many people as they are, uh, especially with bonus damage runes in Live Clash, so I will have to leave Garo at A tier for the time being, but he's such a cool character. So moving on to Genos, he is somewhere between the S and A, but I'll probably have to put him in the S tier. Uh, he's your top whale's favourite unit because he hits so fucking hard, even Oppenheimer's atomic bomb isn't shit compared to Genos's blaster cannons. All the top PvP players use him in their lineup since they can deal tens of millions of damage overall which he has enough power to kill everyone in one turn, as he is the reason why the one turn meta currently exists right now. So he's really really good at the moment as he's the best AoE unit in the game currently, even more so than ATT for the time being, since he can one shot her before she even attacks. And the big downside which all of you know is that he is a super expensive character to invest in as you need to put most of and if not all of your Star Essential cards into him in order to get the best out of him, otherwise he'll be pretty easy to kill. So because of this reason alone, I'm really skeptical whether I should put him in the S or A tier. So, okay look, I can't overlook the fact that all the PvP heavy whales are dominating every server, so I have to put him in the S tier for the time being since he is subjected to change in the long run, okay, but for now, He'll stay here and there's no two ways about it, he is the best unit in the game. Okay, not the best unit, but for AoE, yes. Moving on, we have Goketsu, which he also can be in between the S or A tier, but I will be putting him in the S tier since he is much better than Garo, so I have to put him in the S tier. Uh, he is an offensive tank as he works really well in the front lines, as well as dealing massive amounts of AoE damage, especially if you have his keepsake, as he is still very useful in Life Clash. And he's the strongest AoE attacker for the monster side, which is great for monster tournaments at the moment. PvP wise, his tankiness isn't really necessary as not many grapplers are required for Giri Giri lineups, but if he is banned and then for zombie man lineups, he is such a good character to use. But in Giri Giri lineups, he is often replaced by a Mai and Watchdog Man or Genos who acts as the new king substitute. So he still is a solid tank. He's probably one of the top two tank units in this game. So I am going to keep him in the S tier for the time being. Next up, we have every free to play's favorite character being Giri Giri in the S tier. Since we are currently in his meta, he has to go in the S tier. He's the reason why every fucking character such as Genos and Watchdog Man are so powerful and OP. His max HP and heal rate buffs provide great survivability for your whole team for both PvP and PvE, as well as synergizing really well with so many great espers such as RMG and ATT who are needed to activate his core skills. Also, his level 4 core buffs ultimate damage, which is amazing for PvE content such as for Club Boss Boris, and his level 10 core synergizes very well with dot lineups such as ATT, as he'll buff dot damage by 80%, which will be absolutely insane. Unfortunately, as free to play know, uh, he was locked behind a paywall, which really sucks for free to play, but I still have to put him in the S tier since, you know, he's OP as fuck. And for the time being, you can't be Guru Guru lineups unless you have Guru Guru yourself. Next up, we have King, which I'll put in the A tier and not the B tier. 
So his meta is currently long gone and he's only in the A tier at the moment since he can fill for one of the three Esper slots for Giro Giro Core. And the reason why I say that because his Shatter basic attack is really good for Club Boss Boros and Well Disasters. So his Shatter debuff is really good. I wouldn't really put him in the A tier because of his ult because we have someone like Watchdog Man whose seal and fear is even better. So King, I'll just leave him in the A tier. But he is still very useful for PvP in the hero side. So in the hero tournaments, he's pretty good. And he can heal your allies, which is also pretty good for the hero side. So I'm going to leave him in the A tier. Next up, we have Melzegard, which I will be putting in the A tier. So now that the Esper meta is in effect, Melzegard is now a very good unit to use as he serves as a great tank, as well as being an Esper to fill for Girigiro's core. He is able to heal himself and all of his allies after he attacks, as well as sharing 20% of the damage dealt to allies to be directed towards him as well, on top of which he also reduces that damage taken by 50%. So he really shines during the Gira Gira meta. The only downside is that he's currently the rarest unit to get from summon banners since he's only obtainable through the superb summons, which has a 0.5% chance of pulling for an SSR, on top of which there are 6 SSRs to get in that banner pool, so you have a 1 in 1200 chance of getting Melzegard which requires a shit ton of superb tickets, so it's gonna take a while. Unless you're lucky, which I haven't been since I keep getting fucking he who must not be named or else I'm going to have a fucking another outburst. But overall, he's a great tank during the Giro Giro meta, so if you're missing a third Esper, use him if you're very, very lucky. Next up, we have Monsterized Chose, which I will also be putting in the A tier since he synergizes very well now with ATT, uh, since his passive will provide dot damage boost for that. On top of which, in PvP, he is also really good in Life Clash especially. Uh, if there's no Giro Giro Core required, as I use him so much if I have Giro Giro's Core banned, he is a great unit to have in Life Clash. Also, I would prefer him over Vaccine Man if you had to choose between the two to work with ATT, only because he is tankier than Vaccine Man since he's passive. After he attacks, he also heals himself, but Vaccine Man does provide a bit more damage boost to ATT, so if you just focus purely on damage, you can go with Vaccine Man, but I've heavily invested in Chose, so if I do get ATT, which I don't know if I will, but if I hypothetically do, then I will definitely go for Chose over uh, Vaccine Man. And with Vaccine Man, you need to fire Sarum to do that, so yeah. Okay, next up, we have the Queen herself, RMG, Red Mosquito Girl. She's currently amazing in all aspects of the game, whether that be in PvP modes or against Club Boss Boris or whatnot. She is so, so, so good. And since it has been a month now, the majority of people are getting closer to unlocking her 5-star Awakening, which just makes her such an amazing character. If you haven't seen from Gamma's video when he reviewed God K's accounts, the 5P RMG slays. Other than that, don't really need to go much into her. I've already emphasized everything about her in my review video. So she definitely belongs in the S tier for sure and for quite a while as she has pretty long longevity on the PvE side of things. Next up we have Tank Top Master which I'll also be putting in the A tier. Uh, he is still a great tank for Zombie Man core as well as every other core as his tenacity shields can provide so much health for many aspects of the game as he does provide it for the whole row. He is also a very free to play accessible character as newer players can redeem him for free once they spend 200 heroic tickets at the beginning of the game. Also his keepsake can be obtained for free as we can get his keepsake shards from Club Wars over a long period of time. So I would recommend upgrading his keepsake to 3 stars if you still plan on using him in the game. Now this might be controversial on why I put Tank Top Master and other tanks over Silver Fang. Uh, firstly, everyone reverted or never highly invested in Silver Fang, such as myself, in the first place, as other tanks such as Watchdog Man or support characters such as Amai are much better characters, so we were planning for that for the long run. Secondly, he was locked behind a paywall, so many people wouldn't have had access to him, so Tank Top Master is much more valuable than Silver Fang, so bite me all you want if you don't agree with me, Tank Top Master is still a great tank. 
Okay, so Vaccine Man will also now go in the A tier. He wasn't A tier before. I would have put him in the B tier, but now A tier. And that's only if he has been 5 starred. He's much more valuable now, only for his passive, which will boost your team's dot damage at a slightly higher rate than Chose. So if you want to maximize your ATT's dot damage, then you need to definitely put Vaccine Man in your team. However, as I stated, I would still choose Chose over Vaccine Man just because for survivability, he will survive longer in your lineups. Since if they do kill off Vaccine Man first, then ATT will struggle a bit in the damage department. But other than that, that's the only reason he's up here as long as you have limit breaking him to 5 stars, which he is pretty common since you can get him in both the heroic and the superb summons. Okay, so my penultimate ranking, we have everyone's favourite doggo, which is absolutely dominating in all the fucking PvP modes because of his fucking ceiling shit. Uh, we have Watchdog Man. So he is an amazing unit. He has massive longevity due to his kit being very tanky and he can play as a sub-core unit where you don't even need a core with him in game modes such as Live Clash as he's still really good without a core if you use him correctly. On top of which, his seal is great for PvP and can change the whole battle if you have his keepsake where he can seal 3 energy which can only allow your enemies with Gurigura lineups being able to ult once on the very first turn if they don't have Watchdog Man themselves since their energy cap gets reduced to 3 instead of 4. And not to mention his ult is really strong since its damage is scaled from his max HP which is even stronger during Gurigura meta. So he is such a strong unit and he's going to stay up in the S tier for a pretty long time even during the SSR plus era. And finally, to end things off during July, we have Zombie Man, which will also remain in the S tier. So he is a core unit, and even though his meta is long gone, he is still very useful in PvE content such as Club Boss Boris, where he can inflict injury and revive up to six times, which is just too good to be true and can tank uh, Boris's ults. And he's also the best core for the hero side as well, so for PvP he is a mandated core for hero tournaments and for multiple lineup game modes such as Apex Clash and Club Wars. So that's the end of the current tier list during July and I will now go over the overall tier list during the early stages of the SSR Plus era. So before I move into the remaining 11 characters, many have been downgraded with a couple of them being increased. So who downgraded from S to A, we have Mai Goketsu and Zombie Man, they just don't have as much longevity as they do because their grappler era slowly dies out during the SSR plus era and their are better units over them. And Genos went down from S to B since he is going to be reverted heavily and he's heavily countered by Bomb's shield so he will be a neglected character for a while. And then from A to B, we have basically all of these characters dropped from A to B, except Gorobasi is always going to stay in B tier. And then A to C, we had King, who was A, and then he dropped down to C, since he's one of the shitter LSSR characters, which also includes uh, Metal Knights, and Metal Bats, and Silver Fang, as well as mostly, if not all, of the SSR characters being pushed down to C. But we do have some exceptions, which include uh, Magic Hat, which got up to B tier since he can be filled as the duelist slot for Bomb. So I did put him up here as he would be one of the best SR units to invest in if you are lacking a duelist slot before like uh, SSR plus Metal Bat comes out and whatnot. And I have put ATT all the way up to the S tier because as I've said previously her meta will shine once Bomb comes out and during the SSR plus era she will stand out in a lot of content such as Mirage Trials and the Emblems feature. And even though people do be saying that Child Emperor will counter her, he won't in the sense that he'll just soft counter her because he doesn't have a 100% chance of uh, neglecting dots there is a resistance to it but not a hundred percent so you can go through that immunity so sometimes ATT's uh, dot will still go through the entire row so ATT is still a good unit to pull stop neglecting her don't be scared because Child Emperor in the first place isn't a must pull SSR plus character he is useful but like for free to play players you would rather save your black tickets for better SSR plus characters so she is good okay 
So now I'm going to go through the rest of the remaining SSR characters that we have and this tier list is catered on what their meta span will look like in the early stages of the SSR plus era right until uh, Geru comes out which is a new core and will drastically change up everything. So this era should be lasting to the middle or maybe early middle of next year so maybe April is when Giro might come out or he could come out in mid-year I don't know because Moon Tune like to fast track this game so anyways let me go through each of these characters so firstly we have Awakened Vaccine Man which I would be putting in the A tier uh, he can either be good or bad with ATT comps and this is due to his kit and his passive that once someone has been inflicted with a field, uh, once the character goes uh, on the enemy side, the field effect detonates, which defeats the purpose of ATT's game plan, especially with her keepsake, because the field debuff is supposed to go for two turns, and if Awakened Vaccine Man is in the same team, he will remove the field uh, debuff for two turns entirely, so this might not work, if you put him in ATT lineups, but he is very strong in the monster side as he is the dot AoE attacker in the monster side, as well as being able to unyield two times. And much like ATT, he can be soft countered by SSR plus Child Emperor in the future. So for those who are wondering if he is a better unit than ATT, personally, he's not really, cause he does detonate the field which in my opinion you would want the field lasting as long as possible but uh he is still a very good character i just wouldn't use him with att but i would use him in lineups without att he's still really useful next up we have the core that's gonna last for a long ass time being bomb uh, he's the best core until SSR plus Geru comes out as he introduces the all new resilience shields which counter direct damage such as Genos. That's why he is going to fall off big time once Bomb comes out. But people like ATT and her dots uh, damage can still pierce through his shield so that's why she will be outstanding in this era. Uh, other than that, his longevity is very long as he's going to be the hero core for a long ass time until Drive Knight comes out, which will be ages away, should be one to two years depending on how Moontoon uh, quickly paces this game out. So other than that, he's a core unit, you have to pull for him and he's right around the corner. He could be released during the anniversary, I did predict that he will be out in September, which is the anniversary, so we'll see if he is a banner pull or not. But other than that, you should save your tickets if you do plan to go for ATT, just don't go for her and save for Bomb until we entirely know what the hell's going on in September. But uh, yeah, Bomb will be a very good unit to have. So definitely pull for him, please don't skip for him because he's a cool unit. Next up we have Drive Knight, which I will be putting in the A tier. He synergizes really well with ATT and Bomb as he does provide ultimate reduction to all allies in his passive, which Bomb also does reduce damage as well as this he also works well with ATT that's because once someone's inflicted with the force field debuff uh, he will transform into another form being the silver form which will make him deal more damage which I will go over once I do review him uh, but he is a very niche character because the reason why because he is going to be permanently the slowest character in all your battles and a my speed boost will be unable to boost drive knight speed or sonic v2 will be unable to boost uh drive knight speed so he's always going to be the very last attacking unit so keep that in mind if you do want to use him for not but he is a really good high tech unit for bombs core uh way better than units such as like a g4 or geno so i would highly recommend getting him but he was released as a hero backup stick so in the previous two game versions so I don't really know if it's accessible for free to play but he's a good character to have and he will last in the meta for quite a while. Next up we have Gale Wind which I'm going to be putting in the S tier. So he has great longevity during the SSR plus era as his kit is amazing being able to stun two times and even three times with his keepsake and even four times if you have his keepsake and put formal gear onto him 
so you can stun two thirds of the field which is absolutely amazing. But in the future he will be slightly countered in PvP by Metal Bat version 2. So PvP meta will drop once Metal Bat is released but he is still a really good unit to have in PvE as the meta in PvE he will be there for a very long time since his stun is always useful, stun's really really always useful and he can still stun half the bloody field so it's really good. I still see him being used a lot in the Southeast Asian servers especially in PvP. Uh, on top of all the SSR plus characters so you should invest in him and I do recommend to pull his keepsake if you do have enough keepsake tickets to do so. Next up we have Hellish Blizzard which she will be going in the B tier. So she is an event unit that you can obtain if Moontoon decide to go with this option or not so I'm not too sure how she'll be released to us but she shouldn't be in the banner summon so we should be good in that regard. So basically her kit makes her a weaker awakened vaccine man as she can inflict half the enemies with force field which will detonate like uh, awakened vaccine man straight after she attacks though and not when the enemies attack which has a 60% chance to ignore immunity so that's why she ranks she can rank in the A tier just because she can uh, negate child emperor's dot immunity and she has the best chance to do so but I'm still going to put her in the B tier because she's a really shit version of Awakened Vaccine Man and ATT to begin with. But she does have a plus that she can remove your sealed energy after she attacks which is neat. So against those like Watchdog Men and that she can seal the sealed energy which is really good. So realistically I would put her in between the A or B tier. But I will put her in B tier because she is shitter than both of these two and I can't put her in the same tier as a vaccine man so I'll leave her in the B tier but if she is an event character for free and if you couldn't uh, pull for either one of these then she is a great alternative. Next up we have Hellfire Flame which also belongs oh god in the B tier. So he's only useful with bomb as his main purpose is to make his shields much more beefier. Uh, this is due to his orange shields which will allow to absorb dot injury and charge damage so he is quite a tanky unit in regards to beefing up uh, what you call it uh, bomb's shields however I need to retract that statement he is not tanky himself because uh, he's only really used for his passive as you do need to invest a decent amount into him in order to become tanky since he is quite a squishy character and by that I mean that he needs a lot of HP in order to survive and be somewhat viable for his passive. So other than that he's not really useful and he can be easily replaced once uh, SSR plus units begin to roll out especially once better duelists come so like Metal Bats or Sonic V2. Next up we have Pig God which I will be putting in the A tier so now Pig God will most likely be released in the middle of the SSR plus era but I still decided to include him in this tier list since he should also be an event unit and everyone will have a chance to obtain him so I just wanted to go through what he quickly does because he does introduce a new nifty mechanic. So this new mechanic is where he devours an enemy and renders them out of the battle for one round. He is however immune to this mechanic as well so other pig gods cannot devour each other. So for both PvP and PvE he is a good all rounder if you need him to render a unit out of battle. But his awakening is much much better than his standard SSR variant. So he'll belong in the A tier just for this mechanic alone if you ever needed to reduce someone or render them out of the battle. Next up we have Phoenix Man who still hasn't been announced which I am surprised about but he will also belong in the B tier. Uh, his meta span will be really short since he hasn't been announced yet and Bomb is right around the corner. So realistically he isn't worth pulling for unless he's not in the limited banner summons and maybe as a free character or in a $10 pack or potentially in a hero backup stick which please don't because he's absolutely useless. He is however useful for the monster team since he'll be the zombie man for the villain side due to his high amount of revives. Uh, but other than that he's not heavily used during the SSR plus meta so he belongs in the B tier and there's nothing really much more about him. Okay, so the other great unit during this era alongside Gowind will be Sonic V2. So he is an S tier character because he also has great longevity during the SSR plus era. His kit is amazing for PvP if he is 5 starred as he becomes a speed booster for his entire row. So he can replace Amai in that regard if you need to speed boost your team. 
His tenacity and heal buffs also make him a very good support unit as his survivability is really good and not to mention his DPS being able to deal massive amounts of single target damage. And because of this you can pull for his keepsake to maximize the damage output even further to 800% of his attack. Which you can get if you really want to but if you already have RMGs then I wouldn't recommend it and save for either Gale Winds or upcoming SSR Plus keepsakes. Both him and Gale Wind are exceptional units during the SSR Plus meta as many players even now in the other versions which are 2 years ahead still use either one or both of them uh, during especially in PvP like Life Clash or in PvE game modes so Sonic is really good during the SSR Plus era. For my penultimate character we have Siru which I will be putting in the B tier as well. He is good against the back row as he can deal a good amount of charge damage against the entire back row dealing much more damage than what Phoenix Man can do, but ultimately he loses his value during the SSR Plus era since there are such much more better characters to save up for. He also only really works well if you have someone with tenacity in your team as he will buff up his charge damage if he gets granted tenacity, where he can also grant tenacity with his basic attack. As well as this, he's also quite expensive to invest your materials into, so he is a solid character, but there are much more better characters out there that you want to save your materials for, so he will be staying in the B tier. And finally, we don't have an SSR, but we do have an SR, and the only reason why I did include him here, and why he's above every other SR character, is because just to let you guys know that in the future he will become a AT unit uh, once SSR plus Drive Knight comes out as he'll buff Drive Knight's core tremendously so for future reference whenever Tank Top Vegan does come out you can slowly invest in him over time until uh, Drive Knight comes out in a year or two. Alright and that's all of my rankings for every character in the game for the time being and for the future of this game. I am going to make it very apparent that these are all my opinions, so if you don't like any of the rankings that I gave out, or you're much more experienced than me in this game, since I only started touching this game uh, last year in October, the Southeast Asian servers at the start of the year, and I just keep researching everything, uh, then you can comment down below on what you personally believe is the correct tier list. I will have the template for this tier list down in the description below. So you can create your own rankings and potentially share them in the official One Punch Man The Strongest Discord. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and feel free to comment down below on any questions about my video or possible future content. Until next time.